For question six, they've got a reconciliation and with trig terms as these particular coefficients, the multiplying ratio and the number that's added. Quite a nice wee question, this actually. That's quite good to have made this one up. Well done. Right, anyway, why does these sequences, it says sequences, just the one limit, it's just that obviously depending on x you'll have different values for these. Why do these sequences have a limit? Well, I'll take a bit of explanation. Obviously that has to be a proper fraction. The value of that has to be less than one. The modulus of it has to be between it has to be less than one, so it's going to be between negative one and one. But there are limits to x anyway. Maybe you could show it by doing this. Since the sine of zero is zero, and the sine of pipe and two is one, and they're excluded from the domain, that means the value of sine x must be between one and zero. So it's a proper fraction, which means the terms, or the sequence I could say, will converge. Sequence will converge, multiplying by fractions each time, to a limit. Will that do? Or choose your own sentence. That will appease the marker more. B. The limit of one sequence is a half sine x. Find what it is. Right. Well, the limit. You could use that formula. B over 1 minus a. I'll just put it in bracket because none of these letters actually exist. So the limit is equal to, what's that say again? A half, a half sine x. So I've got this pattern here then. I'm going to have b is cos 2x, a is sine x, and that's to equal a half, oh, talk about goldfish, a half sine x. Hey, what do I like here? I don't like these fractions, so I'll just multiply through it. Well, I'll just double it first and do it in two steps. Shouldn't really need to. So I've got 2 cos 2x over 1 minus sine x equals sine x. And then I've got 2 cos 2x equals sine x multiplied by this. Take that cross and multiply. 1 minus sine x. I'm using a polymer space here. And you see, what you've got now is a double angle equation. So I've got 2 cos 2x minus sine x. And then that's a negative plus sine squared x equals 0. You can see where that's going. It's going to be a quadratic in sine x. To show that, I've got two lots of this though, so I've got two lots of the cos x. Using the form for sine x would be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Minus the sine x, plus sine squared x equals 0. So you have to rub this out, put up the top in a minute. I've got 2 minus, why is this taking so long? 2 minus 4 sine squared x, minus sine x, plus sine squared x equals 0. So altogether, I've got negative 3. We'll change that in a minute. Negative 3 sine squared x minus sine x plus 2 equals 0. I'll just have got room to squeeze it in here. Flip these signs over. Not the actual signs, because then it would be upside down. So the negatives become positive, so that's minus 2 equals 0. So that's what I've got. That's the equation I've got to solve. But I'll have to transfer that up to the top. Right. Now what? So Quadratic and sine, factorise it. There we go again. How many times is that? I've lost count. If I had a pound for every time I'd factorised. Now what have we got? So a 2 can only be 1 and 2. I just want a 1, so I'll have to put the 2 there. And then the plus will go to the bigger one, and that'll be a minus. So I've got two solutions. Sine x is either 2 thirds, or sine x is negative 1. But there were limits to this question. Sine of x is negative 1 at 270 which is 3 pi up in 2, but it says x has to be less than pi up in 2. Maybe I'll put a wee reason. Since x has to be less than pi up in 2, that means there's no solution to this part. Right, that's that part, no solution there. And this one, this is going to have restrict. Normally there's two answers to this. x is going to be inverse sine of 2 thirds, but it's in radians, and so you may as well just set your calculator into radian mode. So you're just going to do, I want to press that button. So you're going to do Inverse sine of 2 divided by 3 in radians gives you 0 0.2, sorry, 0 0.7297 blah blah blah. Now there would be two values, a positive sign here and here. One value, which you've got here, and another value, which would be pi minus it. But that would exceed pi upon 2. It said x has got to be less than pi upon 2, which means that there's only one answer. x equals point seven. what I say, 3 o put a wee note in bracket, again, because x has to be less than pi upon 2. So I make it then that there's only one value of x. 
that would satisfy that according to those limits.